After meeting the Fedenkais and feeling so free inside my body in ways that I haven't even recognized, I didn't have even that taste before, I realized that there's a huge potential within that method to bring it into dancing. I really dived into Feldenkrais and I decided to take some time off from dancing actually. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of um, uh, stopped doing projects for a while and stopped any kind of professional engagements and just started to practice a lot of Feldenkrais every day and then just seeking for ways to to come to approach dancing but through a different not through the things that I already know and that, that are so uh, viable and so much a part of me, but rather to try to meet dance through Fedenkais. As I started, I really had no intention of teaching it. It just, there was some point that it felt be good to, yeah. to share it. Share, great. But there are a few things that I, I find precious and I think that not so often they're being explored in a frame of a dance class. One of them for me is the time that we take to discover things, the time that we take to see how we go from where we currently are to the next point. I think that in dance class many times we are being demanded or asked to uh, produce quickly uh, answers and to produce results quickly. And that frame of thought, uh, it, it has its strength, especially I guess when we do this for a profession, but it also comes in my perspective with a price, since when that is the goal, we are more likely to choose to shoot from our waist. We're more likely to choose the possibility, the pattern, the option that is the most uh, accessible to us, the, the one that we know anyway the most. And I feel that classes are, dance classes are there for, uh, for dancers and for people to learn, and not for dancers and people to feel themselves moving very well. And I think that that's not always what happens in a dance class, in general. Uh, I think it's not so easy to go into a dance class, especially if we call ourselves professional dancers, and give up on that notion of being very successful inside it. You know, we yeah. want to be successful because that's our job. We want to have that validation, and, and I, I know it myself, and I, I see it, and it really makes sense. But I do feel that if we want to evolve to keep on evolving, it comes also, learning always comes with that unstable moment of question. And, and it's a really beautiful, nice moment. And I feel that within frame, a frame of dance classes, it doesn't always receive the respect and the space that it could have to be in the not knowing and to be more comfortable with the gray zones rather than actually manufacturing the answers uh, as quickly as we can. That's one thing that I don't know if it, uh, if it distinguishes me in any kind of way, but for me, as a person that has been also taking a lot of dance classes in Brussels and elsewhere, and sometimes going to a class and feeling a little bit shy uh, in a situation, it's very important for me to create an atmosphere that would uh, encourage people to feel free mm -hmm. and to explore and to allow themselves to be funny or ridiculous or whatever they feel like. I think that learning and new possibilities come with that kind of a f freedom to perceive ourselves differently also. Uh, everything that we learn is information that echoes from within us and I think it's the teacher's job rather than try to impose their ideas and their knowledge but rather to, to encourage that person to to, to give the right impulse for that person to ask the right questions so that they can find their answers. And I think that that's a very specific process that happened very beautifully in Fedenkrais, but not always in dance. More than anything, we focus a lot during this class in the way that we attend the body, the way that we listen to the body. And uh, there, is, there is something Moshe Fedenkrais once said, if you know what you're doing, you can do what you want. And I find that there is nothing else that strikes me more accurate than that. It's spark up curiosity and make the person start to listen uh, to what they're doing. That's the first step in, into learning, into changing our habits, because the brain, the nervous system, they are... It, it sometimes it's nice to think of the, of the brain as a cookie monster. You know, it just wants more and more information. It wants to be fed with information. And, and there are tools and ways to kind of wake up the brain and wake up the learning switch.